Hey, what is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I hope that each and every one of you is having a fantastic day out there. And so before we get into the topic of today's video, I just want to go ahead and give a huge thanks to everybody that has helped me reach the point we're at today. We just passed 2,000 subscribers. It's truly been an amazing journey. And if you're new to the channel, I would like to go ahead and take this opportunity to say welcome. And I hope you would consider subscribing today for some great BMW content. So without further ado, let's get into the video and let's talk about some intakes for the N52. The air intake system is one of the most restrictive parts of the N52 engine and must be freed up in order to allow for this glorious inline 6 to really come alive and into its own. There are many different intake combinations available for the N52 motor and today we will discuss some of the most popular ones. This video will by no means discuss all of them as there are numerous options and some of them are just so expensive that it's really cost prohibitive. I mean they cost uh, more than half of the value of the car such as the Group M intake and we're not going to talk about things like that because I don't think that many people out there are looking to spend half the value of their car on an intake system. And, uh, this video will not discuss the three stage intake manifold. If you're interested in that I have a video on that and I will go ahead and card that right here get some more information on that and what that can do for your N52 car. This video also at times will assume that you are driving a North American spec model and for simplicity's sake we're just going to call it Euro spec and uh, US spec. Now m every country besides North America received the Euro spec. Uh, we just we got a different one because of California's regulations uh, so ours are mounted long ways so like you have to take the filter out and then pull it apart to access the filter and they are also equipped with a built-in charcoal filter and we'll discuss this a little bit more later so regardless of which intake system you decide to use for your M52 I highly recommend replacing the air intake silencer behind the intake box uh, with a silicone tube I got one on eBay from Rev Motoring it fit perfectly uh, no real modifications to make it fit. You just had to remove an alignment tab. It was incredibly easy. Uh, it was one of my very first videos and I will card that here. Uh, I highly recommend doing that. It's going to free up a little bit of horsepower and torque. It's going to make your car freer revving. It's going to make a little bit more intake sound. It's just an all around really good mod. It was like a $60 part and you know I've kind of bought it thinking well if it doesn't do anything well it was just something to tinker with but it was a really good mod and it's, it's up there with my favorite mods and it might sound a bit silly to say that but it really is and uh, I highly recommend checking that out and installing that on your N52 powered BMW as soon as possible. So now moving on to our first air intake option we have the US spec charcoal filter delete so as I said before the box is um, you have to separate it it's like long ways I don't really know how to describe it entirely I'll insert a picture of one and you can kind of see what that looks like so you would open it up and you'll see two filters you'll see one that can be removed by just pulling on it and one that is actually built into the filter so as I said this is designed to catch burping from the engine after it's cut off it's a California regulation thing that's why only North American models receive this air intake box and over time all the stuff that goes through the air filter gets caught up in this charcoal filter all this burping gets caught up in it and it can't be serviced unless you replace that entire portion of your box so I highly recommend cutting it out just take a razor blade cut it out sand it down clean it up really good so you know that you're not gonna suck any pieces of it into your engine also when doing this be sure to remove the mass airflow sensor and keep it somewhere safe as these parts are extremely fragile and also quite expensive. Be really careful because you do not want to damage anything. You can pair this mod with a K&N or AFE drop-in for even more performance. Now with option 2, this is the air intake system that I run. I use the European model um, airbox. I got mine from a totaled 325i from the United Kingdom on ebay.co.uk. These air intakes are, like I said, they're top mounted so you don't have to remove the air box to access the filter. You just take the lid off and remove the old filter, put the new one in or clean it, whatever you're doing. It's, it's a lot easier and it's a big cone filter. So you're getting the best of both worlds. You've got the big cone filter that can suck in lots of air. The volume of the air box is a lot bigger too and you've got a closed box design so you're really not susceptible to heat soak. Now 
These air intake systems run about $500 on ECS tuning, and I do believe that most of what you're paying for really is the um, mass airflow sensor, but the US spec models use a different mass airflow sensor than the European spec, so really you're just going to be throwing that away anyway. I highly recommend trying to source a used one from maybe a European eBay site. Uh, it's not a moving part, you'd have to do something intentional to break the air box, so it's not like you can really get a broken one. So uh, that's, that's my recommendation. Uh, it makes a lot more sound, but being a closed box design, it doesn't make a whole lot of sound. I wish I had done this sooner, but I did get the experience of having the charcoal filter delete with the silicone tube, so it did give me the opportunity to vouch for a different intake setup. For the money, the first option I mentioned is much better, but I did source my Eurospec box for less than $200. The AFE dry filter that I run ran about $90 on Turner Motorsports, so it's a bit more expensive, but it's really not that bad, and I think for what I got from it, it was money well spent. Option three is going to be the BMW Performance Intake. Now whether you have a US spec or a Euro spec model, they both have options for BMW Performance Intake. Now this is not a full intake in its own right. This is, this will modify your existing setup. So you'll get a new lid, you'll get a new snorkel. Uh, they come with a little piece that kind of routes intake noise towards the cabin. Um, I don't know what you actually call that. They replace the filter that you already have. It's, it's just a lot of modifications to the existing stock layout. So, and in the US model, they use the existing back half of the stock box and everything forward is new. So it kind of gives you an idea of what this actually is. And these both run about $1,000, so it's a lot of money. They claim about three horsepower gain. It is what it is. That's was a lot of money for three horsepower, I think. I couldn't justify buying that. Used ones are really hard to find, so you probably would have to buy a new one in this instance, or just be really patient, scour eBay every day, and hope for the best. I've checked numerous times to see if I could pick one up for maybe half price or something that's been used. No luck yet. Moving on, we're going to go to option four, where we have AFE air intake. So AFE offers two different intakes for this car. They have a closed box design, which is similar to the European model. And if you own a European model, I don't know why you would be trying to upgrade your intake unless you want an open setup, which we'll get into that in a minute. So they have the closed box, which is termed stage two SI, and then they have the open box design. So both intakes received pretty positive reviews on the forums. I did a good bit of reading before I made this video to try to be as accurate and informed as possible with real world experience. And people did seem to like these. It did seem that the open air intake was susceptible to heat soak, but the closed one, no. And it just goes where the old intake goes. You just, it's kind of plug and play. Take the old intake out, put the new one in. And this uses a cone filter also, so it's definitely an improvement over the stock US one. They both received good reviews as far as noise is concerned. So, but both of these boxes sell for close to $500. Really, you're gonna be spending the same amount of money on either one, so I would spring for the closed box design unless you really want that intake noise from the open box design. But you will be susceptible to heat soak, which means that your air intake temperatures, especially in like rush hour traffic, will be rising because of the hot air in the engine bay. And these heat shields that they come with don't really help that much because the heat can just kind of go around them. You're paying money to lose horsepower, but you're really paying for the sound, I guess. So if that's what you want, if losing a few horsepower to heat soak doesn't really matter to you, and you just want that sound, open air intake is the way to go, which will take us to the next option that we have here. So engine, they make an open uh, air intake design. Uh, I have a friend that runs this on his N52 model car. He hasn't really said anything about heat soak, but same problems with open air intake design, heat soak. His makes a lot of noise. His car just in general makes a lot of noise. But this sells for about $270 online, and that makes this a much better deal than the AFE model. Uh, there's really not any difference to speak of. It's just an open air intake with a comb filter at the end. They sit in the same spot. They run the same routing. I would go for the cheaper one if I were in the market for an open air intake, but I don't want to lose horsepower to heat soak, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy with the setup that I have at the moment. 
the sixth and final option that we're going to talk about today is a dine-in air intake for the N52. Now these were designed for pre-LCI cars only. I'm pretty sure that you can make it fit on an LCI car with no real problems. You might have to get a new grill piece for the bottom. So this is another one that modifies your existing stock intake. So this one actually though, it requires some cutting and stuff and it's not something that I would want to do. So you cut out the bottom of the air intake and you run a pipe which they give you which is like a little piece of plastic flex pipe, kind of looks like a, an accordion or something. Like the little black pipes that go at the end of rain drains on the sides of houses, kind of looks like one of those. And uh, it runs down to the bottom and it kind of creates a ram air effect sucking in air from the lower grill. So in effect, you're sucking air from the snorkel and from the lower grill. So you should be forcing more air into the intake, creating more power. It's, I don't know anyone that's run it. I've read on the forums of people recreating this air intake from parts from Lowe's that they maybe spent 20 or $30 on. So, and the dine-in air intake cost, it's on dineincars.com right now for $475. So, it's expensive. People can make it for $30 out of Lowe's parts. Take that how you want to take it. Anyway, as I said at the beginning of the video, there are several options for BMW intakes out there. This video did not discuss them all because there's so many combinations. My recommendation would be the Euro intake though. It is an OEM BMW part. Uh, this isn't as important now as very few, if any, E90s are under warranty anymore. So it, you know, you, it's not like they can say that, you know, this voided your warranty anymore. But if in fact your car is under warranty, BMW is not going to be able to claim that the Euro intake voided the warranty because it is a genuine BMW part. BMW equipped most of the 3 Series sold throughout the world with this intake. Using genuine BMW parts is always a plus, even if it's not under warranty. You know, I, I like having it there. Would I go with another intake option? If I hadn't have already bought the one I have, possibly. But I like mine, it's good, it sounds good, the power is there, it's one of my favorite modifications to the car, and I recommend it. Anyway guys, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and uh, go ahead, comment below, let me know what intake you're running, what do you think about it, do you love it, do you hate it, would you recommend it to other people? If you have a video of your intake, um, link it in the comments, because uh, I'd like to know about it. It's always good to know more about these cars and the modifications available for them. Also guys, if you want to, leave a comment below. Let me know what kind of videos you want to see. You know, even if it's, if it's modifications, if it's informative stuff, just let me know. I'd um, like to know what videos my viewers want to see. Like I said before, leave the channel a like. It really, I mean, leave the video a like. It really helps the channel out a lot. And subscribe if you're new. I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something about N52 intakes today.